This is step 12 of the 14 steps found in the art of storytelling. We've taken step 12 and we've divided it into, into two parts with two different film clips. This one here deals with the uh, five senses. So our storytellers are going to take their story and just as an activity, try to add in as many of the five senses as they can. Now, most of these they won't keep uh, as they tell the story. It's just an exercise. Still, I think you'll be amazed how some of these stay with them as they continue on developing their stories. So, let's see how well they do with adding the five senses to their story. crab noticed that her son was walking sideways, clacking his bright blue claws against the stones as he went. Jimmy looked at his mother, the, the orange tips of her claws clicking in excitement. And as a, a gull cawed overhead, the mother crab stood up straight, pointed her toes out, and immediately fell face down on the, on the beach as she raised herself, spitting sand from her mouth. She said, it smells like fish, but it tastes like chicken. It seemed like the interior of the walls were uh, coming in on them, but the, the hugeness of, you know, the, the large crowd of mice, it was exciting. Ah, but they could, they could smell the, 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 the food coming from the kitchen of the cat. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it, just as soon as they identified what they need to be talking about, they could hear the cat going by making his, 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 his snarling, uh, whining, uh, meow, they call it. Oh, but still, even with that, they could smell the food. It made their mouth just water, thinking about the, 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 what, the, what the lady of the house was cooking. <laughs> just to taste that cheese in their mouth made the thought is just made their senses just explode on the inside the old mouse stood up and he stroked his whiskers and felt the the age of it the years of wisdom a few little scratches still scars he held from just barely getting away from the mouse of the cat So I think I would look at the area where the gnat comes flying in. He's and he lands right on the tip of the bull's horn, plants his feet and feels that smooth part of that horn and lets his feet kind of slide down over there and rests. This is a great vantage point for the gnat. He looks out and Mm, the breeze, the, the cool air coming through, making his little antenna fly back and forth. He's smelling the lavender coming up from the prairie. The, the grass is so green. Gets that scent of chlorophyll that we get every spring. <clears throat> Takes a little sniff and he kind of laughs because he knows his gnat cousins, the ones that feed on animal feces, they're back there behind the bull enjoying themselves. As he's up there, you can hear the out in the distance the little clang, clang, clang of all the rest of the herd out there. The dog was so hungry. His stomach ached from hunger. As he walked toward the town, though, he could smell something. Oh, it smelled delicious. 
It was fresh cut meat. His step livened a little more. He reached the town. There were the wooden sidewalks, clickety, 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 click, faster and faster, clickety, 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 click. He was running toward the butcher. <gasps> Suddenly he stopped. There was the butcher, standing tall, with a meat cleaver in his hand and a bone saw on one side. At first the dog was very, very nervous, but he looked rather kind. The dog immediately leaped into the air, <sniffs> chomped down on that delicious bone while the marrow was oozing through his lips. He couldn't wait until he could find a place where he could suck out every bit of that marrow. As the miser dug, the earth was moist. You could, you could smell that new earth as it turned over. And you could stand back and you could hear the birds singing, for spring had finally come. You could hear the bustle on the road of the, of the carts, clippity-clop, clippity-clop, and the wheels turning, and, and the conversations. But back to the digging. He, he could feel the strain every time he threw a shovel of dirt over. And he could almost taste, taste the freshness of the air for spring, as I said, it come. He was excited. He was excited because he knew soon he would hear that clunk. And he did. And then he leaned down and he touched, he touched that tin box. Cold it was, for it had laid in the ground a day. And he opened it that old tin hinge made that noise and there they were gold coins bright and shiny and and he reached down and, and why they almost felt like water as he would let them run through his fingers and the joy built up in him because he loved his money and he slowly counted it piece by piece feeling each one, the texture of, of the insignia on the top, and, and then he would let it clink back into the tin. The sons could hear their father's labored breathing. They could see his chest rising, and each rise became a longer wait. And they could see that his mouth was trying to form a few last words, and so they bent closer, and they, they could spe smell the, the sour linens where he lay. And they heard him whisper, you must look for the treasure. And they began to work the field, and they lifted the heavy mattocks, and they would force it into the ground and loosen up the hard soil. And they felt the sweat just dripping down their sides of their face and down their back. And they needed a break, and so they stopped, and they took their flask and took a sip of cool water. And they splashed it a bit on their face as well to cool their flesh down as well as their throat. 